we're back once again. Uh, Radio Dead Air doing our tech Q&A. We do bi-monthly here. I am uh, Nash. This is my show. Got over a decade's worth of tech and repair and computery stuff in my head meets. And this over here, this is Mike Gearman. He is a producer here on Radio Dead Air, and he does... Hello. For a real living, he does things with jiggery pokery electronics uh sort of mostly i do a lot of paperwork with electronics yeah but you know so so and uh we are looking at your questions if you have questions for us send them to requests at radio.air.com put tech q a in the subject line we will attempt to answer those plus we're looking at a little bit of the news in tech and i guess well the news that is in tech which also sort of spreads out to to a periphery and so a little bit unescapable inescapable at this point is uh star wars star wars star wars star and wars let me say right now i don't get to see it till tomorrow at the earliest so no spoilers motherfuckers no spoilers okay so no no nash um i know where you live and it's it's doing great the movie's great it's breaking box office records and everything but this is of course a sequel to the original trilogy it follows after return of the jedi and lots of people have only ever seen one version of the original trilogy and that is george lucas's special edition A.K.A. the fucked up butchered edition. Oh god, the fucking special edition. Now you know what? For what? For lots of reasons. If you do or don't like the changes Lucas made to it, there are actually some problems beyond that, especially with the 2011 Blu-ray release of the special editions. The coloring is off. the 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 look of it is screwed up. The uh, th there's actually, if you pay close attention to this, there's these weird, nasty splashes of magenta whenever a laser blast goes off. And yeah, what was up with? I never knew what was up with that. It's just lots of stuff like that. There's plus another problem is most of the CG for the special editions was done in 1997, and if there's one truism in movies, it's that nothing ages worse than CGI. It, it, it age practical effects will stand up like nobody's business actual physical props but if we're talking cg animated creatures that are superimposed into real film that stuff ages like crazy so the the other the alternative of course is you can watch the special editions but you can't well you can do you own a Laserdisc player, by chance? Do you own a VCR? Um, those... Or a video disc player. Don't forget those. The video, yeah. Um, My parents have one. There is only one DVD release, which came out in 2006, that was an anamorphic scan. It's not, yeah, it's, it's not good. I'm going to have to look up that word. And... I don't know that word. Not only that, it was transferred badly, so there's motion blur in certain scenes. It just looks awful. And Actually, wait, weren't weren't Animorphs one of the Transformers series? No, different thing. We're okay, talking, we're talking movies. Sure, but in I, I just remember that that those those uh, were not good DVDs. In this case, what I'm and they sold like hotcakes too. <laughs> It's, it's it's come on back mike come on this, back this food, this food is terrible and in such small portions come, mike mike come on yes. back come on back come back from the, sure. come on back okay yes the point Very badly done dvds yes the point i'm reaching here is there has not been an hd release of the original unaltered uh star wars trilogy anywhere it's you cannot physically get it and uh, a few years ago, Lucas actually stated in an interview, which this is gold, 
that it would be fit due to what they had already done with the special editions. It would be physically impossible. He used the word impossible. Yes. To release the unaltered HD versions of the, the original trilogy on yeah, like this, they'd accidentally destroyed the last masters or damaged them in that mm -hmm. process so that they couldn't do this anymore. Yeah. Accidentally. So in response, um, some random guy said, yeah, OK, uh, here you go. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about the despecialized edition. Uh, this was put together by an, uh, an editor who goes by the name of Harmy, although I, I say put together by he had a, actually a fairly large team working with him. Um, what they did, and it is kind of technically astounding what they did. What this group did was, through a combination of the 2011 release of the special editions, plus that 2006 DVD I talked about, yeah. plus... Um, uh, in 2004, there was an HD TV broadcast of the master track for those DVDs, which okay. kind of accidentally, it, it was done in HD, so it was a 720p broadcast of what would have been squished down and put on those DVDs. So it was an HD version of that, but it was still kind of not great. Plus, what they also did was some fans had a 35 millimeter print of the original release of Star Wars. And what they did from that, that can't was be common. They built, they home built their own scanner to scan the film into a computer so they could use the footage. Okay, so my first question here, I'm, hmm. I'm assuming this, this produces a very good HD, eventually HD 720p version. HD, yes. How are these people not being sued into the dirt by Disney? They're kind of keeping this a little anonymous. That This has been floating around. But you asked... Because how... I, they have a Facebook page. Yeah. Well, no, they have a... Per... They're What they're skirting around on is... This is being done for the purposes of preservation. And you know what? They have a point. Okay, fair enough. Uh, this is restoration and preservation. Um, I'm going to link in into this to the video uh, when I put this up on YouTube. I'm going to link in the channel right now. Um, if you want to watch this, which is called the Despecialized Edition, um, there's links available at this, this, uh, YouTube video that goes into, and I, I just want to show a little bit of this because it goes into the, 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 in, just the detail and what they went through to correct the color back to what it was originally to, uh, deal with the, um, stupid, uh, yeah. blaster flare. Yeah. The blaster flare. Uh, and also, they remove, it, they they have to go through and change it, and it's bizarre, because what they are doing is they are re restoring a movie that someone had came in and messed with. Normally, when you restore a film, it's because it's been lost, and they find a, 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 a long-lost negative or something, and then they have to clean it up. This case... The special edition is the damaged print. <laughs> so it's kind of fascinating the links they went to 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 correct it and get it back the way it was. Uh, they also use various different sound mixes, the, the original Dolby sound mix, all this other stuff. It's 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 splendidly done. I've seen it. And if you want to see it too, well, there are links about how to do it at this website. And, you know, figure that shit out on your own. They'll tell you how to get it. I'm sure you can Google it. You can, yeah. Um, but yeah, it really is fantastic. So if you are a fan of Star Wars, if you're going to go see uh, The Force Awakens, if you've already seen it, 
If you haven't watched Star Wars in a while, this really is a great way to see it. Because I will tell you, it holds up spectacularly. Although A New Hope is actually the weakest of them in terms of how well it holds up overall. But it does look fantastic. And oh, the dis- the, the despecialized version of Empire Strikes Back is gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful to behold. So, and th- I, I just, I love, this is a triumph of just random people on the internet all got together and said, yeah, yeah, you can see right there the motion blur on the video right there. This is just a bunch of random people on the internet who all got together and said, we gonna fix this shit. So it's it's Harmy's Star Wars Despecialized. And... Even just the the link I linked to uh, the video, it's fa- it's a fascinating little mini documentary about how they did this. Very cool. Yeah, so check that out. If it, just you know what, to be a, entirely on the up and up, make sure you already own a copy of Star Wars, because legally you already own it. You already paid for it. It's just now you get to watch it the way should have been. Because God, they're stupid. <laughs> oh, there, there's one scene in in the in this special edition where, for no good goddamn reason, just this giant CGI dinosaur thing walks right in front of the camera, just because they could. And I'm like, you're blocking the shot, motherfucker. Uh, so yeah, there you go. You can enjoy the original trilogy the way lots of us did. I, I actually I saw the original trilogy when it was I I don't. I'm not sure which re-release it was. I think it was 1979 or 1980. Okay. And very not long after, because I loved it. I was a little little wee tiny creature, and I saw the movie, and I loved it. But I was also very, very young, and I did not understand what movie trailers were. I did not understand the concept. I think I was like three at the time. Okay. So I did not get what the the whole idea of what a movie trailer was. So after I'd seen Star Wars, gone Star Wars crazy, just been like, oh my God, Star Wars. My parents took me back to the movies for a different movie at another time. And the trailer for Empire Strikes Back came on. And I was so happy. And it was two minutes long. (laughs) I cried a lot. I was completely inconsolable. They're like, honey, what's wrong? It's not my time over. It's over. What is the move? It was hilarious. Ah. Uh, they sound like two words. I said, there's Luke Skywalker. <laughs> All right. So moving on to a different sort of copyright shenanigans this week. Um, the UK just had a uh, a copyright ruling that effectively should scare the crap out of every single photographer on the planet. Oh, yeah, I saw this one. This, This is so painful, this copyright ruling. This is EU. No, UK. Oh, UK, sorry. This comes from the UK. This is, uh, uh, well, what it, what it boils down to. You may need a license to photograph things you already own. Yeah, because it is a design made by someone else. So, now, obviously, for certain things, it's not going to be an issue if you want to take a photograph of your, your Red Bull can. That's not really a design thing, probably, that they're going to come after you for. But if you had, like, a $2,000 chair, mm-hmm. and people make $2,000 chairs, mm-hmm. um, that you decide to include in a photo shoot, you've got to get permission and a license of some sort uh, to use that chair in your photo shoot. Otherwise, they could sue you for copyright infringement. For taking a two-dimensional picture... Of a three-dimensional object. Of a three-dimensional object. That infringes their copyright. Yeah. I'm not, you know, 
oh god cuz uh, the very idea that well i could go out and buy this $2000 designer chair but i think i'll take a picture of it this is an acceptable substitute for owning a 2000 are you high <laughs> Are you absolutely out of your fucking mind? Well, this this chair, this picture of my chair. Is someone going to replace your chair with a picture of a chair? Well, it's the Tory government, so who knows why they passed this, really? I'm like, are you, 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 right now, I want you to show me sitting the fuck down on a picture of a chair. Tell me how comfy that shit is. <laughs> how just... Uh, and the nasty... The, the, it gets a little bit, even a little bit nastier because this is one of those rulings that some clever fucking lawyer could potentially build on. They, yeah. could, they could argue, well, if the design applies in this case, this is a handmade handbag that my client created all by herself in the dark, blindfolded, while having ferrets chew on her on her the bottom of of her lips. I don't know how how artists work anymore. It's it's fucking weird. And because she made this handbag herself and is carrying it with her in public, if you take a picture of her. Carrying that handbag, you owe her money. Yeah, it's because it could be it could be complete. You could be unaware. You are taking a picture of something that you'd have to license. Yes, you're, you're taking a picture of your family in front of a uh, a touristy location, and someone walks by with something in the shot. Yeah, th this is this is going to result in a whole new kind of rent seeking. Even right now, without even now. now I, I suspect they're only going to go after primarily professional photographers and they're not going to go after someone who put up something on his Facebook page. There'll be some asshole who will, because there always is. Well, it's it's we it's reserving that right is already dangerous enough as it is, because saying at any time I can go after you, I can hold this over your head at any time. It's ridiculous. And even even without anyone expanding on or building on this ru ruling, right now, I am fairly certain that there are lawyers and, well, no, not lawyers themselves. There are unpaid interns of lawyers who are scouring the internet looking for any instance of a designed object having been photocopied or photographed. And they are just preparing to send out all sorts of cease and desists and, and suits. And they're, they're, there's an industry getting revved up based around this. It's a ridiculous fucking ruling. Yeah. And what, the, what I'm seeing is that they haven't actually decided when it's going to go into effect yet either. Yeah. They're, they're, they're still to make up their mind. It could be three months from now. It could be, me, sorry, six months from now, three years from now or five years from now, no one's decided yet. It's, it's fucking crazy. So if they go five years, it, it, it's possible if they go five years that the next government will come in and say, yeah, we're getting rid of this. I should also point out the UK also did make an announcement recently that the whole idea of copying your own music, say you have a CD and you want to copy it to your cell phone, you want to copy your music to your Now that's, illegal again. That's illegal. That is that is copyright infringement to copy a CD to your smartphone to rip a CD and put the MP3. That's illegal. Sorry, you have to buy all the music again. Otherwise, you're breaking the law. What the fuck is going on over there right now? This is some crazy shit. This is a lot of the you're you're really just trying to put the genie back into the bottle. Well, they had another one, too, just recently. Oh, which one? Uh, the City of London's uh, IP police, and the City of London has IP police, um, busted three people for sharing songs for karaoke that had not yet been released for karaoke. Mm -hmm. 
Hundreds of the, uh, what they're saying is hundreds of albums had their copyright uploaded by the men, leading to thousands and thousands of tracks being accessed illegally and depriving legitimate music companies of a significant amount of money. Well, no, it hadn't been. If it wasn't available, it's not depriving them of anything nope. until they make it available. Yep. That, that's how it works. If I have a song that I have not said you can use and you use it, I'm not losing any money. Because you weren't selling it. it. This this is and by the way, then they're referring to these it's three 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 people age fifty, fifty three, and sixty. We're not talking teenagers doing this. Uh, they've been described as a gang. It's the first gang I've heard of that might need walkers. Now I'm just thinking of that old Monty Python Hell's Granny sketch. I remember that one. I, this is all of this overreach, all of this copyright maximalism is eroding the, the intended purpose of copyright in the first place. Which copyright was intended to give a limited monopoly to the creator of a work so they could monetize their creation. Not so that giant rights holding corporations could suck up all of these copyright licenses and hold them forever and never let them go and then use them to rent seek to to claim money from the public at large and public domain what the hell happened to public domain remember that remember when public domain was a thing oh yeah oh yeah well occasionally a few works do slip into public domain <laughs> and they fight tooth and nail to stop it Oh, I think Happy Birthday just went into public domain. And they fought tooth and nail to stop it. Millions of dollars were spent on that. I know, ridiculous. Well, finally... Uh, but, uh, the, the good news about it going into public domain means we no longer have to listen to uh, restaurants' crappy versions of their own Happy Birthday songs. We don't have to, but we will anyway. Yeah, because. <sighs> Anyway, so our last one, it is the holiday shopping season, and um, being that it is the 21st century, lots and lots of people are taking to placing their wish lists in the cloud. Oh, sure. The cloud. Amazon started doing that years ago. The cloud. And now we have retail outlets are offering their own uh specific branded uh apps to allow you to do this oh yeah you know what they're not offering i'm gonna go with network security to prevent protect those lists yes wait how did i know and of course yet again if we're talking about security failures we're talking about target Target's wish lip list app uh, springs a major personal data leak. Yeah, I think I saw this one. It's uh, names, phone numbers, addresses. Email addresses, home addresses, wish lists of Target customers. It's available to anyone who figures out the app's publicly available programming interface. Yeah. That's the kind of thing someone should get fired over. Oh my god. But what the... How did... Uh, you would think that Target... Remember Target not that long ago was in a whole heap of fucking trouble for that giant ass credit card leak? Yep. You would... Oh, yeah. You'd think after that. Maybe Target would start taking their network security just a wee bit more seriously. Uh -huh. No. But probably because, this is my guess, this wasn't written in-house by Target. Same as the other thing wasn't. So they, whoever was, didn't, didn't think it wasn't in the contracts. They didn't do it. I mean, the Target hack happened because they had their HVAC system on the same network as their cash registers. I'm not joking. That's how it happened. 
And so they weren't trying, the hackers weren't coming in through the, the cash register system because that was secure ish. They came in through HVAC because who, who wants, who, who, who's going to spend money securing HVAC? <laughs> Not Target. So, yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, Amazon has there's been relatively secure for years. Yeah, but this is this is just here. Le- Go ahead. I say you'd think they'd learn, but uh, I'm guessing whichever target executives got fired for the last one didn't pass on any lessons learned, like have security. Well, it, here's the thing. There have been effectively no real penalties to the company itself. Mm. Some fines, some bad publicity. I think they got sued by their credit card companies. Yeah. But nothing that would come in and make them go, what the fuck are you doing? You can't do it this way. You sloppy, half-ass, low-bidding motherfuckers. And this is pro- this is the true of all companies right now who have access to your personal data. There really is no one breathing down their necks to make sure security is on point. Yes, some of those companies do take it upon themselves to look after their security, and others, very large companies like Target, don't. They they just they they have no impetus. They have no motivation. Why? Because what's going to happen? Get a few headlines, a couple lawsuits. They, they, they'd they still do that cost-benefit analysis. Would the cost of paying out a settlement on this lawsuit be more than actually upgrading our computer security? If it's less than upgrading computer security, they're just going to pay the fucking lawsuit. Would, even if we were talking, would a fine be less that we'll just pay the fucking fine. So right now, well, we... that's, that's what happened with um, one of the uh, what should we call it? Uh, identity theft companies. They just got hit with another hundred million dollar fine. Life Live Leak, yeah, that's the one where the 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 CEO put his uh, his social own social security number on the side of the man. Said, "Here's steal my social security number. I bet you can't do it." Got used thirteen times. To steal his identity. (laughs) And they got away with it. 13 times. And part of it's because over here, you know, the companies that would theoretically want to check on those things just don't bother. They go, oh, yeah, that's a social security number. That's good enough. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson, you remember him? Yeah. Once published, because he was convinced how the systems were secure over in the UK, once published his banking number. And it, nothing got, only one person stole from it. And it was a charity that gave themselves 400, uh, 400 500 pounds. Mm-hmm. It's, just, yeah. it, it's, it's right. This is going to continue to be a problem. Understand. Corporations who are asking for your private data you have no guarantees that they are keeping it secure. They may be, but they also might be pulling shit like this every fucking time. You have no guarantees. So before you turn your data over, before you you they ask you, oh, we just need this, this for your... Even going to the store and filling out one of those little forms to get one of those, those little cards or, oh, it's a discount card. Every time you do this, understand... They may not be treating your data all that securely, and you may, you know, not do any fucking weird shit online ever, but you filled out, you got your discount card at Walgreens, and then all of a sudden, two years later, suddenly you got an identity theft shit, and someone making credit cards in your name, and your credit's fucked. Why? Because Walgreens couldn't give a fuck about keeping your data secure. So understand, keep, be aware of this before you start you sign over any any of your information because they aren't keeping it safe. They they don't give a fuck about keeping it safe. They just want it. Keeping it safe ain't they problem. 
Oh, what about Facebook? Are they secure? <laughs> given, given that Facebook can't even manage to show you your correct friends list sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck that. I, 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 I give them as little as fucking possible. They still keep annoying me about, hey, you haven't filled in all your data on your... And you know what? I never the fuck am. Facebook, yeah. I never the yeah. fuck am. You haven't put your phone number in here yet. Nope. Not nope, gonna. not going to. Get fucked. And there was a thing recently where, briefly, there was some guy, I don't even remember his name, was briefly added to like 200,000 Facebook accounts. No one ahead of him. Mm. He just suddenly appeared. And then a few hours later, was gone. Oh, all right, well. Now that we've carried out that part of our nonsense, let's go to the other part of the nonsense. We are looking at your tech questions tonight. And uh, we're going to start with uh, a uh, question from August. Uh, my name's August. Big fan of your shows and I need some help. Yes, you do, because you're a big fan of this stuff. What? What is, you know, do you have friends? Just, 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 just get to his question. Yeah, you know, maybe. Go out and but don't and, question people who are giving you money, Nash. Get a dog. Get a dog. Um, earlier this week, I upgraded my motherboard and Intel processor on my PC. After reinstalling Windows 10, the product key I've been using now comes out invalid. Does that mean I have to buy a new product key or is there a workaround? Just want to make sure before I fork over my money to buy a new product key. Thanks in advance. August. Okay, August. Um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, I, I want to address this for everybody ha who might have to deal with this. Windows product activation is not always perfect. It can be a little sketchy and it can definitely be a little oversensitive, especially when you replace hardware in your computer. We talked about this a little bit last time. Um, yeah. Windows is supposed to keep track of a certain number of pieces that are swapped out and suddenly considers it a new computer if you swap out too much stuff. But there's no real guideline for this that's published anywhere. It's sort of Microsoft's secret. Yeah, now certain things don't really count terribly strongly. Adding, expanding your memory doesn't seem to count. No. Adding a hard drive may or may not, replacing a hard drive may or may not. Motherboard. That sounded like a crash. Um, Yay! Motherboard and processor definitely count. Live, everybody. Uh, it wasn't in, wasn't in my driveway. I'm not concerned. Not my problem. Going on. Moving along. Uh, motherboard and processor definitely count. And the reason they count is because motherboard and processor have IDs associated with them. And Microsoft uses those IDs, along with a couple other things, to determine... Windows IDs and, and and how much has changed. Because they don't expect you to change your motherboard and processor very often. Hard drives, yes, may come and go. Video cards, sure. Memory, absolutely. Motherboard and processor, almost never. So when that changes, you have to reactivate. Now, the number, the, 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 the key you have is actually still good. Yeah. What you've got to do is you've got to call Microsoft. Yeah, you actually have to, this, you're not going to have to buy a new key. You're not going to have to spend any more money. All you have to do is contact Microsoft support. They have a hotline for this because it was so badly thought out to begin with. They actually had to set up a fucking help center. There's a whole wing of people who every day have to deal with this problem that Microsoft just insists on carrying over from version to version so there's still there's still a whole bunch. So you'll have to talk to a person. You'll have to explain to them. Yes, I upgraded my motherboard. Now Windows is not valid. What can I do? And, and in fact, that number should be when you try to type in your 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 key, it should pop up and say, "Hey, this is not a valid key. Do you want to call us, or how do you want to contact us?" Yeah. And it's a one eight six six or one eight hundred number. I used to know it by heart because I was doing uh, cloned images. Yeah. I made the perfect build, and I had to copy it to 20 other machines. 
but it was individual licenses. So I had to call them up and activate each one separately because they weren't allowed on a network. They did. They didn't give you a bulk key. We didn't buy a bulk key. And when I say we, someone other than me. How does that happen? Well, you'd still have to activate it online. Yeah, but that's supposed to be on a fucking. And if, you, uh... and if you can't, if you can't plug it into a network, you can't activate it online. You still end up calling. Them. So I just had twenty separate keys. Uh... No big deal because once I made these machines, I never saw them again. Uh... So yeah, if you're absolutely fine, you're, you'll be able to call them up. You may or may not even talk to a live person. It may just be put in this information. They go, yeah. That key has only been used one other time. He's probably okay. Yeah. yeah. If they go, that key's been used 943 times, you're screwed. Yeah. Why so, don't as long, as long put as, your key anywhere online. Yeah, as long as your key was legitimate to begin with, you're probably okay. You There's... might have to talk to a real person and explain things, but that's very unlikely because uh, real people cost money. A hilarious little side note to this. Um, there used to be, uh, I forget what the name of the program was. But what the program did was it was sort of like uh, taking stock of everything that was on your computer. And it would, it would like, it would keep, it would like, you have this motherboard, this processor, this stuff. And also you have this software installed. And it would put the license keys for the software you have in this report that it typed up. Only it would put the report online. Oh, that's bad. And there used to be, man, back when I was in college, and just that, if you wanted an easy Windows XP license key, all y'all had to do was just Google that shit on, online. Boom! <laughs> it's your birthday! And they were valid keys, and it was stupid. And I, that was one of those little tricks us, us script kitties had back in the day. All right. <clears throat> don't do that, kids. It's very illegal. You shouldn't do that. Don't don't ever do that sort of thing. <clears throat> anyway. All right. Next question comes from Diego. I've decided to upgrade my motherboard, currently using an Asus H81M Plus. I have two problems in doing so. One, I don't remember how much I paid for my current one. And two, I know jack shit about motherboards. That's why I'm using a micro ATX instead of a regular ATX. So I don't have a way to know what would be a better motherboard. It's an Intel 1150. Okay. Um, now this is a little frustrating. A, th there is a way to determine features on a motherboard between, you know, the, all right, I'll, I'll, let me break this down a little bit. You have two elements of a motherboard that are required for a given processor. The first one is the socket type. The socket is uh, that place where the processor fits into. And in this case, it's an Intel 1150. Intel has a very bad naming thing, which is what I'm building up to. It's called the Intel 1150 socket because it has 1,150 pin sockets. So that's what they decide to name it. So you, it, the numbering system doesn't always make sense. There's the... Well, that one, that seems like it makes sense. Yeah, but when you move from one to the next, I, I believe the, the previous one was the 1155. Ah, so you think, oh, 1150 is worse than 1155. When it's two completely different fucking things. Um... Now, AMD had a wonderful way of doing this. They would just call it socket A, socket B, so just a simple little way, but Intel with all these fucking numbers. Now, the other part of the motherboard that you have to, to concern with, whether you know it's, it's, it works with your processor, is the chipset. That's a little separate mini computer on the motherboard. Well, and yeah. the form factor, but he's already said yeah. mini ATX, so... yeah. That's a little tiny uh, separate computer that's on your motherboard. That's what they say when they call what's called a chipset. What the chipset does is it looks after your USB, um, the communication, PCI. PCI, the communication between your expansion cards and the processor, 
uh, the memory, all of these things, it routes and connects them. The better your chipset, the more functionality it has, and the better and the more it expensive do. the computer, right? And the more expensive motherboard. Here's where we get into the problem. He's using an H81 chipset. It's a little old. How the nomenclature on these things is you would think droids in droids in George Lucas shit make more sense than Intel chipset nomenclature. The one he needs that would here's what I was getting to, Diego. Here's here's the relevant bit you need. The one that you need that would be a significant upgrade, whatever motherboard you get, is the Z97. How you how you get from H81 to Z97, both supporting the same processor, I have no fucking Nobody idea. Knows. No fucking you would think that, you know... Dark boards. It's... Eight? Seven. Okay. It's, it sounds like Star Wars droid numbers, doesn't it? Z97, we need the plans of the Death Star. No! What the fuck are you doing? This is why normal people can't get into building the computer shit. Because if you tell them they need an 1150 motherboard and a Z97 chipset, they go know what the fuck y'all talking about because th the fucking nomenclature doesn't make sense. It's the H81 and the Z97. Where's your car? I have an X79 in my computer. I don't even know what mine is. I have an X79. The X79 goes with the 2011 chipset or so socket. X79 with the, with, with the, 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 why does X79 go with the 2011, but the Z97 goes with the 1150? What the fuck, Intel? <laughs> but yeah, so the Z97 chipset is what you're looking for, as you said. Um, and then micro ATX. And yeah. honestly, what I would do, you know, you say you only have one store near you that sells computer parts. That's that's fine. You because know, maybe if they don't have what you need in, they can order it. But what I would also do is go to a site like Newegg. And you're not necessarily going to be ordering from there, but they have a very powerful yeah. tool which tells you, I want a motherboard. And you go to advanced search and you say, I want this form factor. I want this chipset. I want this socket. Right. And it says, here's what you've got available. So you'll get a product number. So you can get a product number. You can get a rough price, you know, yeah. uh, or at least a rough price comparison. Because I'm, you know, not going to assume that it's going to cost you if you get a direct translation from dollars to whatever your currency is. That's going to be the same. There's going to be either be a massive additional massive markup or maybe it might be even be a little cheaper. Who knows? It, it all depends on on your import laws there on how much they have tariffs on things. Yeah. So that 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 what you, that that'll help you figure out what you want. Uh, Asus is a good brand. I would stick with them for a good brand, and look up the Z ninety seven, and that should take you from there. That should should help you go from from that point. All right. Next one's from Sonya. She says. I have a friend who's interested in going to DIY computer work. He has some minor experience swapping out hard drives and examining the insides of a computer. He wants to learn more about the subject. Currently in position, he can't go to a vocational school, college, university. He has potential. Is there any reading material you can recommend? Blah, 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 to get him started. Okay. Reading material is not going to help. Well, it's going to help and whatnot, but it's not yeah, where you want to go. If you had the book for, say, the A A plus, well, that that's what I'm getting to. That's that's yeah. what I'm getting at. Reading material alone is not what you want to go to here. In the field of computer repair, what is the, co degrees are kind of respected, but what's more widely respected in in tech is certifications. Um, that's what they look for when they're hiring. I mean, you could have a. I have. A, I have. A, I have a degree in English, and I worked for ten years repairing shit. Why? Because I was a certified A plus 
repair person. I knew what the, what the, the A plus certification does is it says you have taken a test that certifies you know how to take a computer apart, put it back together, troubleshoot, repair, blah, 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 all of those things. And it's used industry wide. There's also uh, Microsoft certifications for for uh, Windows, for Windows Server, for C plus, for all these other different things. Certifications are, are a widely looked at thing in the field. Having an A plus certification, it is it's just entry level. I will kind of tell you, but the A plus certification is their way of saying, I I can I know what I'm doing. Um. It costs me now. And unlike other certs, it's not something you go to a, a cert farm and, and, and easily get because it requires a lot of hands on stuff. Yeah. Um, hello, train. Hello, train. Hello, train's early tonight. Um, with the A, what, you, what your friend can do is look up A training materials. And there's tons of websites that will give you all sorts of, of stuff to help you study for it. That. That alone, just looking up for A-plus computer certification study materials, will teach you a ton about computer stuff that you need to know, practical stuff. And when you get to the point where he wants to get started doing it for real, well, I don't know what the cost of taking the A-plus is these days. It was $300 back when I took it, but that was a long time ago. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, um. I, I, I would wager it'd be no more than $500, which may sound like a lot, but pretty much once you take, well, at least when I took it, you take the A+, plus, you have the A+. Plus. You may need to update your certifications later, but it is a really good value, and it is something employers look for. And even if you're just going to be doing it for yourself, if you're going to be doing do-it-yourself computer repair, having an A-plus certification when you're doing it really helps customer confidence because they look and at that sort of stuff. I've just looked it up on online and the A plus cert in the U S costs $194. Wow. It is, it is a very good value for getting the A plus. So, uh, and there are training, uh, classes you can take, not training classes, training videos. You can see on YouTube, uh, you just put in a plus training and, and go, uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't know which of them are any good. There are some out there that appear to be from Pearson and some other reputable companies, yeah. and, but there's plenty of other stuff out there. You know, some guys have uh, 70 something videos under their A plus training. Some people have five. Just go with what looks good and seems to be highly, highly rated. Yeah. So that, 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 there you go. That, that'll be a big help there. Um, all right. Our last one tonight comes from Michael. Oh, this is going to be a nasty one. Oh, I can already tell. Hey, Nash and Mike. Recently, my comp- my desktop computer I've had for four years has started acting up. Near the end of the oh, this, is, this is from uh, Yoshi. Oh, Mike. no, Yoshi fan. Right, sorry. Um, near the end of the boot up, PC would either reboot without any error or blue screen with one of a few different errors, page area and unpaged area. The dreaded IRQ is not less than or equal to... <sighs> God. Hate that fucking error message. What the fuck does that even mean? That is not English. That is not any language a human being speaks. PC load letter. You need to get C3 motherfucking C3PO in here to talk to the computer to find out what it's trying to tell you. Because that ain't what humans speak. Um... And remember, best off the last one, I started checking on my RAM sticks. Four gigabytes DDR3. He had four of them, no more than a year old. Eventually, I found one wasn't working and removed that. PC now boots, but won't last more than 10 minutes before blue screening again in one of those errors. Any idea what's going on? A cheap, preferable way to fix it. Oh, Yoshi fan. Yeah, this is coming from Yoshi, Yoshi fan. I'm pretty sure you have another dead or dying RAM stick in there as well. Yeah, yeah. it's it's th- this. I think um, one there are of- memory tests you can run on your computer that take less than ten minutes and can possibly tell you uh, which one it is. 
I'm trying to remember the name of the memory test program, or if it was one you can download. Uh, it's not coming to mind right this second. Mem test, I, I think, is one of them. Mem test, yes. Mem test, yeah. Uh, and that one's the mem test is for free, but I'm re I'm pretty sure. In fact, look at which. Uh, if you said you had four four gigabyte sticks, that means you had two sticks to a bank. Look at the one that was sharing that memory bank that you pulled out already. If you didn't mix them up. If you didn't mix them up, yeah. The one right next to it might have been bad as well. Because if you're getting similar errors, I think maybe, probably, it's hard to speculate why. Maybe you got an overvoltage to one of those banks and it damaged the chips. Maybe one of them overheated and it, it carried over. It's hard to tell. Memory can go bad for any number of weird, random reasons. That's why you static. Stat static discharge yourself every time you work inside a computer. Um... Run mem test, run the extended mem test, the really long one. It, mem test 86. Yeah. Yes. Run the one that lasts like 24 hours just to be on the safe side. And it'll now you say your computer doesn't run, you know, stay up for 10 minutes. Mem test, once you download it, can be uh, run off a memory stick. So you can boot off of it effectively. Yeah. I want to say, I want to say, I don't remember if it boots. It, it can be run uh, in ways so that you know, you can keep your computer right. Yeah. But uh, yes. Run mem test. Run the fast one. Run the fast version first, because it might come back and say, "Oh, hey, here's the problem." Yeah. And if that doesn't, then run the slower one. But yeah, in general, my my gut feeling is you had two sticks bad, and hopefully that's all. Um. Now that that said, unless you're doing a, a massive amount of of data crunching. Your remaining memory rate should be sufficient because that's you said four four gigabyte sticks. Yeah, uh, that take them down to eight gigabytes. Yeah, which is is is, is sufficient for most things. Um, yeah. The other thing I would do, it is extremely unlikely, but it's very slim chance your memory is still under warranty, and take it back. Slim chance, almost zero. But sometimes the memory is, gives more than the standard ninety days that most electronics have. So. But yeah, IRQ not less than equal. Oh, that when, when you see that, it's hard to get into without going to entire big long technical spiel. But if you ever see the IRQ not less than equal error, that normally tends to mean there is a hardware problem, something physically broken. Not always, but it's a good indicator. And that's why we hate to see it, because it means something is broken, but trying to figure out what, there's the fun. There's the entertaining next three days you're going to have. Yanking stuff out and putting stuff back in and trying to figure out what the fuck is fucked up. Oh, I hate that fucking error code. So Yoshi, yeah, I'm sorry. Bad news on that count. I wish I could have better news for you there, but my gut instinct, given what I've seen before, says you've got another bad stick. I'm sorry. And the last one, this is a quick one. Uh, Michael says, I'm finding myself with quite a few HDMI output devices, only have two HDMI ins on my TV, maybe in need of some sort of splitter, but I'm on a tight budget. Any opinions on an affordable solution? Amazon. Yeah, no, literally any, almost anything you find on Amazon. I would read the reviews yep. for the specific uh, reason, what you're looking for, which may or may not be mentioned in the device itself, will be mentioned in the reviews. Uh, a lot of devices, when they're playing back to a TV uh, over HDMI, will go, hey, is there something here that I can talk to so that I can, you know, like a VCR, a lot of VCR, DVD player, Blu-ray player, will say, am I talking to a TV, something that's authorized to be receiving this. Yeah, and you want to make sure your splitter, whatever you're using, is capable of passing along that check. Some of them don't. Most do. Yeah, just because if it doesn't, you're either going to get a downgraded image or nothing. Yeah, it's what is that called? The H something HCSM something. It's that's the 
copy it protection was, thing. It was, it was put in by the same people who tried to make VCR tapes uh, uh, copy protected. <laughs> um, Didn't whoever, work and just became a huge headache for the rest of us. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. You want something that's passed along. Otherwise, like I say, you get, you get bad signal, no signal. Um, but, you know, realistically, anything, any, almost anything will do it. Look look for uh, high rated items, you know. Yeah. Four and, stars are better. And you can find something twenty bucks or less. Most likely. Yes. So you're not looking at a huge amount of, of money on that. So. And and depending on, on on how your configuration is, you might even just get something that has, you know, you know, one out to the TV. H D C P, that's it. H D C P. Four ends, and you go, oh, I've got more than four devices, you know, more than five devices. Just figure out which ones you use the most often. Plug those in and have the one on the end be for, oh, I'm good. I need to watch Chromecast today. Uh, unplug, plug. So, or actually, I've I found ones that have nice little cheap remotes. You can keep them all plugged in and click, click, click. Well, it depends on how many ports you have. Yeah. If you've got, if you, you know, if, if he's got like 12 devices, I don't know that there's a good six, a cheap six. <laughs> port. Uh, so you, that might go, be a I've bit too much. Ports, yeah. I've got four ports and, and, and six devices just figure out which one you use the least often and which two and put those on the end well i don't think you can daisy chain those things though no i'm not sure well that's that's pretty much going to wrap it up for us uh this is our last one before dark christmas and we just had hanukkah go by so i guess to say happy holidays everybody and we'll be back in two weeks and take it easy. Goodbye.